Hello, everybody. Testing, testing, testing. Hiya. CJ in the house. What is up, brother? Are we picking out the topic for tomorrow? That's what I want to know. Chris, hello. The night will probably be fairly short. Just because this is a short chapter. Hello, Joshua. Can y'all hear me all right? Still trying to get used to this mic. Um, so I just got back in town this morning. Been running around doing errands all day. Haven't had sleep, which is good because that's an example. We have the Holy Spirit. Oh, y'all see all my trash over there. Let's fix that. Uh, which way? If y'all could see this room. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. There we go. That's better. Can y'all hear me? All right. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Jamie. All right, so actually, one thing I didn't realize, but I thought was pretty cool, in Chapter 4, I actually used Pushing the Boundaries, which is the name of the fifth book. I did not do that intentionally. So that is like, I would call that a prophetic word, probably. Um. But that is cool. When I when I was writing this book, I actually thought book number five was going to be a different thing. So I was just rereading it, and that is cool. I think it was in where is it? Like page twenty seven. Where I talk about. Pushing the boundaries. So, yeah, this is a real short chapter. And the gist of this chapter is we act like there hasn't been 2,000 years between the early church and now. We act as if you can take what Paul's writing about and just plump it right into today, that's impossible, and I'll tell you why that's impossible. There was a whole bunch of things scripturally that happened that is not in scriptures, but is in history that we totally disregard and we don't take into account when we're reading Paul's writings. Paul would have been martyred approximately 67, somewhere between 66 and 68 AD. All right? At that time, hello, Alec, hello, Julia. At that time, the destruction of the temple had not happened. At that time, the the war, the Jewish war, had not happened. And that is a that is a big, big thing that people don't 
know about, they know about, but they they don't relate it. The time when Paul was writing, that had not happened. For instance, in Hebrews 8.13, in that he saith, a new covenant he have made the first old. Now that which would decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So from the time of Jesus' resurrection to 70 AD was exactly 40 years. For those 40 years, the old covenant system within okay so when when jesus was crucified the temple was rent from top from bottom to top god's spirit left the temple jesus was resurrected his spirit came and resided in believers okay that was the prophecy that was fulfilled which i shall pour my spirit out upon all flesh in acts peter is saying that was fulfilled on the day of pentecost which it was so god no longer resided in the temple but yet the Jewish leaders kept the old covenant intact because they did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Okay, so now that which is decaying and is waxing old. In God's eyes, the old covenant was fulfilled. It was done over with. In man's eyes, in the, in the Jewish system, they did not recognize Jesus. They continued in the old covenant for 40 years until the temple was destroyed and Jerusalem was destroyed. That had not happened yet. But the moment Jesus fulfilled the old covenant is when God's spirit left the temple of Jerusalem. That was the official ending in God's eyes of the old covenant. But man kept it going for 40 years. This is one missing blanks that people do not recognize. And so they read as if the old covenant is still going on and on and on. No. The moment of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection in God's eyes, the old covenant was fulfilled. So you had the prophecies, the old prophets fulfilled. John the Baptist was the last of the old covenant prophets whose job was to prophesy about Jesus. Okay? This is what we don't understand. This is what we don't get because... We just don't go into that study. I've studied it intens intensively through Isubis, who was a historian, through Josephus, historian. In fact, Josephus was a general in the Jewish army who went over to the Roman side he observed everything that happened. It was really a first account history of what was happening. People don't understand this, so they miss that now it's done, been done for thousands of years. So there is so much in scripture in Paul's writings that we think we're waiting for that we actually aren't because that's been fulfilled 
but because it isn't in the Bible, people dismiss it. And in fact, um, hello, Neil. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, Lojo. Come in your body, Lojo. Um, that's the big thing we missed. And we don't understand that John the Baptist was the last Old Covenant prophet. We don't get that either. There's so much we don't get because we don't look past what we see in the Bible. So then when it comes to for instance, um, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Okay. So, after 70 AD, and I mean, I could get really deep into eschatology, but that would confuse a lot of people. So, until I write that book, I try not to get too deep into it because I will lose people. And I don't want to... Um, I don't want to confuse anyone, so that's why there's certain topics until until I write the book that explains it in an understandable way that that shows see okay, so <laughs> here's we certain parts especially those that are real legalistic tend to give labels to things that they don't understand one of those labels given is separatist okay uh, many people would label me as a separatist but they would be wrong in which in every category in every labeling there is a, there's extreme on both sides but there's also in the middle separatists yes that was a line of thought to which for instance hitler used to persecute jews but Here's the thing. Once the destruction of Jerusalem happened, that is what proved that the old covenant no longer existed. The Jews, you had, you had the Jews that were taken captive. You had the Jews that were killed. 1.5 million Jews killed, 1.5 million Jews taken captive, which that is what Jesus is describing when he says there, there are two women in the mill. One is left, one is taken. That is not describing the rapture. That is describing the destruction of Jerusalem. And what happened was there would be two people the Romans killed one of them and took the other as a slave. That's the reference. We don't know that because we don't study for ourselves. Okay? But anyhow, what happened was, so once the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed, and in fact, when the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, 
That is when the animal sacrifices stopped. Until then, they had kept going with the animal sacrifices. And that is mentioned in the book of Daniel. So I'm trying to, I'm really trying not to get too, too deep, y'all. If I start confusing somebody, say, I'm confused and I'll shut up. Um, no, actually, that's wrong, Gene. I have it. I can, absolutely. I could write the book right this moment. The problem is there's too much background I have to cover in order to prove it to people that do not study this for themselves. I have to cover a lot of background. If I don't cover the background, people will get confused. That's why I have a complete understanding of it. I study this in depth. That's not the problem. I can write the book on it right this moment. Anyhow. I have, <laughs> trust me. So, the abomination that caused des desolation was the Roman army when they surrounded Jerusalem. They were the abomination that caused desolation. They destroyed Jerusalem, which brought an end that is what separated the goats from the sheep. That is when the remnant did exactly as Jesus said. They fled Jerusalem. Now, on their foreheads, they were sealed. Because as soon as they would have gone to leave. If God had not protected them, the Jews would have slaughtered them and the Romans would have slaughtered the ones that got past. God protected them. They fled to a mountain, to a mount. Okay? That's the remnant for starters. But this is stuff we don't know. Okay, so the Jewish converts that followed Jesus when the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, they went to the mountain just as Jesus in Matthew 24 told them to do. You had those Jews. You had the Jews that were killed, the 1.5 million. You had the Jews that were taken captive, 1.5 million. Jesus is the one that broke the wall, the wall that separated the Jews from the Greeks. Okay? That partition was taken down with the fulfillment of the Old Covenant, and that was proven with the destruction of Jerusalem. It's not separatist as legalists and a lot of theologians want to call it. It is one nation in Christ. It is the Jews and the Gentiles being harmonic under Christ, being one nation under Christ. But those that want to um, make the truth into a legalistic standpoint, they demean it by calling it separatism. There's one nation under Christ. Jesus is the house of Jerusalem. So, if you don't understand that, then you don't get that we have everything we need right now for our bodies 
to be fully redeemed. Except one thing. We don't believe it can happen while we're alive. That's the confusion. Right there, that's the confusion. It's not those teaching the truth that are separating the Jews from the Gentiles or the Gentiles from the Jews. It's those that don't understand. Jesus broke that wall down. There is no Jew. There is no Gentiles. There is no slave. There is no freeborn. There is one in Christ. He is son of his own house. He is the house of Israel. So, in order to be part of the house of Israel, you have to believe that he is the house of Israel. That's not being separatist. Okay? The separatists, oh my golly. <laughs> I could get in deep here. The separatists are the ones that claim that the Jewish nation, that God treats the Jewish nation different than he treats Christians. They're the ones separating. Okay? It is not the ones that are saying the wall of separation is down. It's not, uh, it's not us. They're creating the separatists. It's the ones that are claiming, oh, God treats the nation, the physical nation of Israel, different than he treats the Christian, the Christians. No, that's not true. There is no more division because we're united in Christ unless you do not accept Christ. The Jews who do not accept Christ, they separate themselves from the house of Israel. But we don't understand that. I'm getting deep. And I don't want to go this deep. But that's okay. So if we don't understand all that. And we don't understand that we are one nation in Christ. The Messianic Jews who have accepted Christ. Are one with us. The true house of Israel is Jesus. And we are his house because the Holy Spirit's in us. So the ones that are causing the separation are the very ones that do not understand this. But the, the thing that hurts, so then now we think we have to die in order to have our body redeemed christ redeemed our bodies now we're playing catch up to understand that because we have got a large chunk that's in history but not in the bible and we toss that away we toss that aside don't pay any attention to it so therefore we miss the fact that we are truly sons of god that we are truly capable, and death is not the release. Death, we look at death as being the release to heaven. But we have proof through Enoch as one of those that death is not the, does not have to be the release for heaven at all. And Enoch shows us this. Because of his faith, he pleased God. Now, people will say, well, it's because Enoch has a special purpose now. Okay, that's wrong. It doesn't say that Enoch was translated because he had a special purpose. Enoch was translated because he pleased God through his faith. 
he did not have to wait for his glorified body. I'm telling you. You can believe me. You cannot believe me. Um, our bodies are already redeemed. We're not seeing that just because we don't believe it because we've got a big chunk missing because we don't pay attention to it and we don't study it out and we instead we think actually my bible's still in the car from where i was traveling we think only what's in scriptures is the end all but guess what holy spirit's still writing these books whether other people think so or not these books are holy spirit inspired are they part of the canonized bible no but are they inspired by the holy spirit absolutely we still have we are still living in biblical times but because of the way our perception is we don't think we are. All right. I've actually gone a lot deeper than what I thought. But and I get I get deeper into it and in pushing the boundaries. Okay, the way the Lord's laid this out for me, the books that are coming up and all of this, it is so that those who are striving to learn, those who want the truth, those who want the missing pieces filled in, and they are searching for it so that they can understand it. And that's why the Lord showing me the order, the books. I've got three books that are already written in here. It will prob probably take less than a month for for me to write these three books and they will be bigger than pushing the boundaries a lot bigger because that'd be more detailed so you believe me there is no more separation we are all ones all who accept christ we are in harmony now our bodies are redeemed what is stopping us from seeing that is we don't believe it My favorite verse, Romans 8, 11. That if ye are Christ, ye have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You are his temple. Therefore, he is giving life to your temple. He is quickening your mortal bodies. Now, that is not a future event. That started 2,000 years ago. But we think we are still, un we're still in Adam under the limitations that God spelled out to Adam that was a result of the fall without realizing that we have better than the Garden of Eden now and it's all available now to include a divinely healthy life we are sons of god now that's why we have to be born of the spirit now when we're born of the spirit we take on our father's dna our true father's DNA. All of this is available now. And the more people that one teach this truth, the more people that start living this out, the easier it will be to live out. And we will start seeing fruit from it in our lifetime. And we are already. The amount of people that are living in divine health now that are not prone to flus 
and all this other stuff that everybody is terrified of. There are more people living that way now than ever before. And I include acts in that. We just don't realize it because right now it's spread out. But all over this world, people are living in divine health. All over this world, there are people that are not worried about what is that called? The coronavirus or whatever. Um, which, should I go to politics? Yeah. If you, if you look back in history, whenever there's a presidential election, all of a sudden, there's an epidemic of some sorts. Which, I'm going to leave it alone. Because we are believers in Christ, and we have access to divine health right now. That includes legs moving. That includes arms that can't move moving. That we have divine health now. And we need only believe that. Philip, are you going to teach pushing the boundaries? Hello? Yo, Adrian. Um, but that's the point in this chapter is to see there are missing pieces. We think of it as just lumping what Paul says, right? And that's the end of it. We're not moving any further. And that's been Christianity's problem. We have stayed stuck because of leadership that misrepresents what happens. And yet, fellows like Enoch, Elijah, they all prove they're very lives prove that death is not the release to heaven for most people it is because that's what we believe and that is so huge what we believe is what structures our life as long as we believe these mortal bodies have to die they will even though we have evidence that that doesn't have to happen. Enoch is evidence of that. But then we bring in misperceptions, and then we try to say, well, there's a special purpose for Enoch. Well, guess what? The reason he was translated wasn't for another purpose. The reason he was translated, as it specifically states, was because he pleased God by his faith. That's the reason. Right there. Right there. For those that want to say, God said so. Well, guess what? God said so. That's Bible. That is scripture. That is proven. You cannot prove Enoch had another reason that God had another reason to translate Enoch into the eternal state, his glorified body. You can't prove it. Absolutely cannot. You can twist things around to say that, but you cannot prove it. When's the appointed time for all to die? On the cross. That we are all appointed once to die. That was at the cross. Very simple. We died in Christ. We were raised up in Christ. That is when we were born in the spirit. Born again. That is when 
our eternal nature started. Eternity does not start when we die. Eternity starts the moment we accept Christ. And that's what it's talking about there. Elizabeth. Um, like I said, all of this is already in here. But that will be, I think, the third book. I got two others before that. First, we have to understand what the new covenant is, which, like, very few people do. But legalists, and when I say religion, I mean the religiosity, the religiousness, those who have not come completely out of the old covenant uses demeaning names so people do not study it for themselves so people do not get the understanding and then we're stuck in a rut powerless and simply waiting to go to heaven heaven is here now we are no longer praying the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. His kingdom has come. And it went from one son to many sons. And it's continuing to grow. There ain't no doom and gloom in our future, folks. People want to keep leadership wants to keep people in fear well 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 that's not it because you know we don't come out of that no the way it's taught inspires fear the truth inspires hope the truth inspires us to strive for god's rest which is another thing. You can't be in God's rest when you're fighting, fighting, fighting. Christians have more enemies according to the religious people and to the uninformed. We got more enemies than anyone else. Everybody's against it. That is not what scripture says. Scripture says Jesus defeated the enemies. We are not meddling. The, part of the problem is our idea of spiritual warfare where it should be being in God's rest, that it's done. Instead, spiritual warfare looks nothing like what it was in the apostles days it don't even resemble it because you cannot show me in scriptures one where jezebel is a spirit where she is a demon where she is a principality she is not she is a dead woman that died over four thousand years ago she did not become a demon she did not become an angel she did not become a principality okay sorry folks that woman named jezebel not that spirit not that principality but what have we done we have made her into an immortal being by our teachings by us speaking it that's what Christianity is doing, we are creating the resistance by our beliefs instead of being in God's rest that Jesus fulfilled it. The apostles, they had to go through the trying times. That is when the kingdom of God was being birthed. 
was 770 AD. Bam. Yes. So, this is what keeps Christians sick. It's not understanding what happened. It's not understanding so much of this is done over with and gone. It's been fulfilled. The redemption of our bodies. Christ redeemed our bodies. But we don't believe it because we're walking by sight. Not by the Spirit. And that is what is going on. And so the more people that grab a hold of this truth and understand this truth, the greater, greater, greater things we will see. And we are seeing the greater things. We are seeing, oh my, repenting for sins of our ancestors. Don't get me started on that, Christine. <laughs> exactly, Philip. Um, hello, May. We were redeemed from the curse of the law. Not only that, I said it somewhere, and I don't remember where, but, okay, in Christ, that scripture that talks about the generational curses are for those who hate God. If you're a believer, do you hate God? So how can you have a generational curse if you call yourself a Christian and you love God? Because that scripture in Isaiah specifically states that the sins of the Father will carry on to the third and fourth generation of those who hate God. So if you're a believer in Christ and you hate God, then we need to knock you out and get you saved. You're not capable of having a generational curse that was for those who hate God, who hated God. And it wasn't the Gentiles. It was the Pharisees, which is what he's talking about. Which all of that's presented in Ezekiel, anyhow. That those who sin, that soul shall die. That the, that the sins of the Father will not be passed down to the Son, neither will the sins of the Son be passed down to the Fathers. Totally, completely rescinded even before Christ. But once again, it was for those who hate God. And if you're a believer in Christ and you hate God, we got a problem. Major problem. But yet, we see the generational curses because we believe that they exist and the secular world teaches it. So you've got the religiousness screaming it from the mountaintops, and then you've got the secular world. Number one, if I am in agreement with the secular world, I better take a look at my theology. I'm sorry. How else am I going to say it? If we have a belief... If we have a belief that agrees with three quarters of people, generally speaking, we better take a look at that belief.
We're a peculiar people. So, if people that don't believe in God believe and by generational curses, that's what Christians call it, but what the secular world calls it is heredity. So if you as a Christian agree with the secular world on generational curses, how are you a peculiar people? That's where we need to take a look at our theology. If we're believing the same things as unbelievers, we've got a problem. Yes, they do, Philip. Exactly, Loretta. Doctors ask that big time. And so that is why three quarters of the world believes that there are generational curses. Not only do you have uninformed believers teaching it, but you've got the secular, the medical field teaching the same thing. How can I agree with unbelievers? That don't make me peculiar at all. The blue hair makes me a little peculiar. Um, Y'all know I'm joking. Exactly. Um, for DOT physical, they want you to write down everything. For when you take your newborn baby, complete list of the mother, the father's medical history, complete list of the grandmothers, aunts, uncles, third, fourth, fifth, sixth cousins. But that's just wrong. Time to get a new theology. It is time to understand what we truly have in the new covenant that is an everlasting covenant everlasting covenant folks that means there is no end to it because the covenant was made between the father and the son we weren't involved in it we become part of it when we believe in the son now we become part of it but the agreement it is not between him and us. That's the old covenant. The old covenant, it was between God and Moses representing the children of Israel. We're not there anymore. That wall has been broken down. Now our bodies are redeemed when we believe it. Look at it this way. The children of Israel in the desert. They were not feeble. There was none feeble until the old covenant. And we have a covenant for better promises. But yet, their shoes did not wear out. Their clothes did not fade. They did not wear out. To hear some people talk, the children of Israel had it better than we did. That is wrong. If there was no feeble among the children of Israel during the time of the desert, should there be feeble among believers today? Absolutely not. No way, Jose. We are in a new and better covenant because we ain't involved in it. The covenant is not between us and God. That's what makes an everlasting covenant. It is between the Father and the Son, and when we are in 
Christ, we are now partakers of the covenant. I want you all to grasp this and really grab a hold of this. The, there is nothing brought over into the new covenant from the old covenant. Completely different. You've got a different priesthood. That's our first clue. In the old covenant, the priesthood was from the lineage of Aaron. New covenant. Who's it? It's after the order of Melchizedek, of whom Jesus is the high priest. Aaron is not the high priest. Aaron died. Jesus is the house of Israel today. The house of Israel is not a physical nation. The house of Israel is Jesus being king. That is why those teaching this, I'm not a separatist. I'm a togetherist. We are united as one in Christ. There is no Jew. There is no Gentile. There is no slave. There is no freeborn. There is no male, no female. We are in Christ. So, whew, I went off on a bunch of tangents there. But, you, you know, um, the upcoming books are going to be broken down. Like I said, they're already, all I got to do is type them out. That's, that's all I have to. I have, and you see how easily it came out of my mouth. It's already in my heart. So when we understand where we are in history, then we can easier accept who we are as sons, as daughters, and really take on the DNA of who we are. While we're on this physical earth, there is no more waiting. And the more people grab a hold of this, I am telling you, the easier it will be. The more believers are united to the truth, it's the truth that sets you free. It's not recognizing the lie that sets you free. It's the truth. Not being focused on the lie. Look. I, I got to do this. So, I got $2 bills, which I actually ain't got $2 bills. Pretend this is $2 bills. Just pretend they're $100 bills. Okay. This one's fake. This one's real. What are you going to do with the fake one? Not pay it any attention. You ain't going to sit there and play and have to spend a fake $100 bill. You're either going to turn it over to the Department of Treasury, FBI, or whatever, or throw it in the trash. You don't focus on the lies. You focus on the truth. With a $100 bill that's real, this is the one you're going to plan how to spend. That's where we get confused. We stay focused on the lie. We stay focused, oh, we need to call out the false prophets and blah, 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 blah. No, just be a real prophet and speak the truth. There you go, Philip. 
that we are too focused on the lies and that's why we as christians are overwhelmed that's why we as christians are a depressed bunch we are too busy fighting a spiritual warfare that does not exist another book instead of being in god's rest yeah but the word spiritual warfare is in scripture yes it is but being in god's rest that's our warfare because jesus has conquered it all that's why we're more than conquerors we have nothing left to conquer we have truth to spread that's what we got to do spread the truth quit spreading the lies such as generational curses man you know i just when you do your personal study and when you set aside what you've been told and read what's there through the eyes of the holy spirit a whole new picture comes up and god's rest is spiritual warfare and is resting on what jesus did he is the house of israel and we can't be touched wait a minute i gotta do this hold on hold the phone Yeah, this is just the perfect day. This is the perfect day. We ready? Bam. All right, y'all. I am fixing to get some sleep. I love y'all. If y'all got questions, ask them now. Forever hold your peace. I love you, Philip. <laughs> you the man, Philip. Um, I went a lot more in depth than what I thought I would, but it's all good. <clears throat> when we quit finding our perception of spiritual warfare, which is the wrong perception, and we start being in God's rest which is available to us now. It's not backed by scriptures. Uh, Michelle, it's not backed by scriptures. if you pinpoint and draw out the old covenant which i don't want to say the majority of us but the majority of us are not jewish the majority of us are gentiles we were never under the old covenant only the jews the children of israel were under the old covenant that is when the book of isaiah was written but once again let me reiterate it specifically states to those who hate god who hated god those who didn't know him who didn't know him the religious leaders of the time for starters so there is not a contradiction you are led to believe there's a contradiction 
But when you do the study for yourself, there is no contradiction. The law was the schoolmaster. What can block something that's already done? Nothing. Jesus already fulfilled it. There, the only thing that can block a healing is believing that is blocked. Then, if I believe McDonald's closes at 8 o'clock, then to me, McDonald's is closed at 8 o'clock. So I can't run in Millsboro and get me a cheeseburger because in my mind, it doesn't make it true. But if I believe McDonald's closes at eight, then do I have an option of going to McDonald's and getting something? No, because I think it's closed. We get what we believe. That is why it is so important to focus on truth. And so important to know truth and not go by what grandma, grandpa, great grandma, great grandpa, great 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 grandma, great 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 grandpa said. We have got to quit having a Christianity that has been passed down through the word of mouth. We are too open to true information today that we can study it all out for ourselves, understand it for ourselves. Now, and once again, this I'm not condemning grandma and grandpa. Okay? The Lord is highly merciful as long as they accept christ they're golden okay but that doesn't mean their theology was correct we have got too much access to history to everything to um ancient writings that we never had access to before. Now is the time for the truth to come out. And that's where our focus should be. And quit trying to go off of someone else's misperceptions. All right. So, I actually I did have two pizzas, but I love y'all. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Trust me, Michelle. <laughs> I never know exactly what I'm going to teach because I let the Holy Spirit direct me. I don't. I may take a few notes of some of the topics I think I'm going to cover in the night, but most time it ain't. Tomorrow at six, yes. You are so welcome, Michelle. All right, so we got myself and CJ plus Jesus tomorrow at six. Tomorrow, CJ is supposed to come up with a topic that stumps Tony. Let's see if he's successful.
and it can't be and it can't be a topic that is all opinion he already tried that that don't cut it uh so we will see since i surprised him last week this is his chance to stump tony let's see if he can do it i'm curious myself uh y'all may want to message cj with some advice on what type of topic would completely stump me and we know it ain't coffee <laughs> Yes, he's open to ideas, Sarah Lou. Message him. Let's see if CJ can stump Tony. <laughs> It'll be fun. So, anyhow, y'all, I love each and every one of you. Owen, love you, bro. Mike, my bro, Mike, love you. Love y'all. So God bless each and every one of you. Oh, that's a simple one. Yeah, we already talked about that. CJ, we're talking about Jesus. <laughs> Admittedly, I mean, I know a little bit about bas basketball. That's the sport where you where you destroy somebody kneecap, take them out. That's why I never was on an organized team. I I originally was born in Indiana, so I can play basketball, but I was too rough. I believed in hurting people. That was prior to the day of my salvation, folks. So. God bless each and every one of you. I am out of here. We will talk to you all later.